Example 3a, write the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x equals the square root of x at 1 comma 1. All right, square root function, we know it looks sort of like this, right? So we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line, actually the equation of the tangent line at the point 1, 1. Like, like right, oh no, the graph goes by halves. Uh, so right about like right there. Hmm, hmm. Can kind of, I can almost picture it, what it's going to look like. Let's do some calculus in order to get it. So we don't even have to use our imaginations. Like our graphing calculator will be our imagination. So let's see. I want the slope using the tangent line definition, which is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of, and it's, it's this one value here. Or is it this one value? No, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, okay. F of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. Remember, we're just, we're, we're applying this thing where our 1 is right here. Our 1 is right there. Blue on blue. You can totally see that, can't you? Now then, now that I've set it up, I've established like a little blueprint for my problem. I'm going to start plugging stuff into our functions here. Fun function, not functions, plural. Limit as h goes to 0 of the square root of 1 plus h minus square root of 1 is 1 all over h. My gosh, I wonder what we would get if we were to just stick in 0 here. Let's see. We're going to 0. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then over 0. 0 over 0. Hmm. Well, look, I've got square roots. How can I fix this indeterminate form of 0 over 0 when you have square roots? Could you possibly maybe rationalize it by multiplying by a common, no, not a common denominator, a conjugate. That's the C word I'm looking for. Square root of 1 plus h plus 1 on the top and the bottom. All right, and then across the top, it's going to function like its difference of two squares, canceling out the square root, thus rationalizing the numerator. That's British for numerator. Um, all right, so the limit as h goes to 0. Multiplying the two square roots together, I just get 1 plus h, and then minus 1 times 1 minus 1. And we like to keep the bottom in factored form. So h times square root of 1 plus h and then plus 1. On the top, stuff cancels. Another stuff is going to cancel too. Just wait for it. So this h on the top and this h on the bottom, they're going to cancel. Let's do it. And leave a 1 up top. Leaving me with the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over the square root of 1 plus h plus 1. All right, before we evaluate this, let me, let me pose a question to you. What is the relationship between this expression here and this original one? Well, remember, if you were to graph them, they would look almost identical. It's just that this one has a hole right here at 0, and this one got rid of the hole. It filled it in for us, thereby letting us evaluate this limit. So let's do it. Let's directly substitute in uh, a 0 here, and I'm just going to get 1 over the square root of 1. Don't worry. Don't freak about that. I'm going to plug that into the calculator. Square roots are hard. Um, so wait. Do I need to Actually, no, I want this one. I want this one. This is going to be sure. Let's go. We'll see. Square root of 1. Oh, yeah, it's 1. I should have known that. Of course. I should. I, of course. All right, anyway. So it's 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. Let's see. Are we done with this question? Let's go back here. Let's write the equation of the tangent line. No, not quite done. Here's our point. Here's our... Uh, slope, let's put both of those things together in point slope form to come up with y minus 1 is equal to a half x, parentheses, minus 1. There we go. You can leave it like that. It's perfectly acceptable. 
but I'm going to go ahead and graph it though. Um, I'm actually going to use the tangent line, the equation of the tangent line for something secret in the next part of this example three. So in order to do that, I need to solve it for y. Um, y is equal to one half x. I'd have a minus a half there and I'd have to add one to it so it makes it plus a half. And just like I did before, just because it's kind of fun to do, let's pull up regular decimos here and pull this up. Let's cancel that and cancel that and do the square root function. So y equals the square root of x, hit enter on that. And then also that tangent line thingy that we just came up with, y is equal to 0.5x plus 0.5. Doop. Maybe I even graph the point, you know, just let's let's put the point one comma one on there. What did I just do? I don't know. I need to put a one in there. And then enter. All right, yeah, so we can really see where that point is. Look at this. That was so nice. Yes, it's so nice. Okay. All right, then let's look at the second part of this. Example three, part B, part, part. Oh, well, okay, yeah. There was the graph there. I didn't have to do it on Desmos. Use the equation of the line tangent to the graph of f of x equaling the square root of x at 1 comma 1 to approximate the value of the square root of 2. Is your estimate an over or an under approximation? All right, so this is strange. We're using the tangent line to approximate square root of 2? Yes, very, very common application of a tangent line. And the reason why is because... Let me come back to Desmos here. Really close to the number one, the tangent line gets to be almost indistinguishable from the actual function. And let me let me just ask you this. What's easier to do? Take the square roots of weird numbers or, you know, just evaluate some numbers on a line? I think the line's going to be easier. Now, in general, when we do this, we want whatever it is that we're going to approximate to be as close to that number one as possible. We're doing it over here at two, and you can see that there's definitely a little bit of a gap right there, right there at two. It's going to be negligible for the purposes of this particular example. So I'm going to say that the square root of two is approximately equal to, approximately equal to, using this tangent line, plugging in, Mm, 2, right, plugging in 2 for x, 1 half of 2 plus 1 half, uh, that would be 1 plus a half, which I'm pretty sure is 1.5, and do you know off the top of your head what the square root of 2 actually is? I think it's like 1.414, blah, 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 it's irrational, so it'll keep going. So as a, an approximation, it's okay. I mean, we're just off by what looks like maybe less than a tenth here. Um, and the, the rest of the question was, did we just over or under approximate the curve? Well, obviously, like we can see this tangent line. This tangent line is up above. In this case, wait, do I have an animation for that? There it is. Awesome. I can see that it is up above the curve, and that's exactly what it's based off of. This was an easier kind of example because we know the shape of that curve. We are kind of familiar with the square root of 2, and so it was easy to piece those two things together in order to see that we over-approximated the square root of 2 by a little bit. But in general, what I do is exactly what's happening in this picture. I just see, is the tangent line above the curve? Or is it below the curve? If we're using our tangent line to approximate the value of a function really close to the point of tangency, then if it is up above the curve, it must be over approximating it. So let me just kind of draw a couple of pictures for you here, because I promise you it will come up. Vert, vert. And I'm going to draw maybe a graph like this, like yes, Rutter. And then I'm going to put in a tangent line. So let's say that over some sort of interval, 
really close to this point of tangency, which I'll just call P for whatever, for whatever reason, really close. This tangent line is up above this curve, and so the tangent line is going to over approximate any value in a small interval that contains that point P. So the tangent line is above. So this is going to over approximate. And let me draw another picture for you, because I'm really good at it. And maybe I do a different function, and maybe I do, I don't know, maybe something like this. And I'll throw in another tangent line, this time like right here. And let's say that I'm going to use this tangent line to approximate the curve right here at this point. And yeah, you can totally see it's now underneath the curve, it's going to under approximate the value of the function. So when your tangent line is below the curve, it's going to under approximate. In the probably the last part of this chapter or something like that, maybe next chapter or something, we will learn, yeah, it's actually the next one, we will learn ways to figure out whether or not that tangent line is above it or below the curve without actually having to look at the graph. Right now, that's what we have to do is look at the graph because we don't, we don't know. But there is a calculus technique that will enable us to make that judgment whether the tangent line is above or below, which is good because we're using that tangent line to approximate the curve, and uh, we kind of know, we, we, we want to know, did we just get too big? Did we overshoot it by a little bit? Or um, did we not sh shoot high enough or something? <laughs>